Okay. All right. Now we are recording. Now we are official. Okay. All right. So let's kick off. Is Marcy, are you on? Yeah. Oh. No. Okay. Well, we're skipping that one. All right. Uh, let's do the Adidas update. So we and Brad, you want to take that one? That was the reoccupation of the buildings, the cycle track, and the TVs and lights that are on all the time. <laughs> Yeah, I really was are. really banking on the other part happening, and I took a big bite of my hamburger. Oh, like, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all may go first. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay. All right. Do you have anything you want to share, Brad, or just up? Yeah, no, I, I do. A um, couple oh. things. Wait. Sorry. Just to follow the rules. Can somebody yeah. um, <laughs> make a motion to approve the agenda? Oh, so moved. Brad, any second? I'll second, Casey. All right, any opposition? <laughs> Good, okay, Brad, go ahead, sorry. <laughs> no, no problem. I wanna make so, sure I my eyes. A couple of things I was working on on the Adidas uh, situation was the parking permit question. And I sent a note off to the city, it ended up going two different directions. Um, one person's gonna get back to me, but the other person said, we're taking the polls out at the end of the month and uh, the program will, the current program will cease to exist, which was the original plan. Adidas was paying for it through the end of March um, or when their construction was done, but it sounds like that they're gonna pay for it through the end of March. And then there will not be any parking permit program at this point. Um, also, they may they're not, not gonna extend it. They're just taking it out. They're not gonna ask neighbors if they wanna extend it. They're just- uh, that, that is correct. I think, we'd be in a different situation if it wasn't for the pandemic and all the workers being remote and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, because I don't think we're gonna have a major problem for a while um, because there aren't gonna be a whole lot of workers for a while. Mm -hmm. um, so, should be okay. all right. but I think we're gonna be back to reassessing. And it was a, it was a unique, it was a unique program. Uh, most of the time they would not authorize something like this, but this is a little bit of a, a the city actually kind of went out on a limb for a change to do that. So uh, at the moment, that's the plan is that at the end of March, the signs will be out and the program is over and then it's back to just uh, free parking. The other thing I was looking at was the um, city bike lane construction. And I reached mm -hmm. out to Scott Cohen uh, about that, he said, because it's Peabot's not building it, um, Adidas is technically. And so they don't have as much uh, visibility to what's going on. There was the concern that I think it was Chris that said about the construction stopping due to the homeless camp. camp. No, that was me. That was you, thanks. Yeah, and that came from that came from Adidas. So it's funny to hear your side of it because it sounds like we're at a at a, a stand a standoff almost of who wants to to deal with it. Uh, Adidas's official stance is that um, they they will not uh, they they will not continue construction until Peabot does something about. Uh, about the homeless camps that are in the way of the construction. And so it's at a complete and total standstill um, until PBOT does something to alleviate that problem. So uh, uh, Alexandra passed along uh, Jonathan Mouse from what was Bike Portland is now mm -hmm. the Street Trust, if I got that right. Not sure. No, he's not Street Trust, he's Bike Portland. Anyway, um, He's been the, the lead advocate in town as far as uh, writing articles and things like that about these things. And uh, he mentioned that uh, he was looking for an update as well because he had heard that there was an issue. And I sent him that update, yeah. Okay. Is that why he wrote back or did you answer him? I answered him. Okay. Um, what'd you answer? I can read it to you one second. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Unless I missed it. I said, hi, Jonathan, the information in the neighborhood paper uh, was because he asked about the article in the paper. 
Mm, um, oh, that's right. Thank you. Yeah. The information in the neighborhood paper was provided to me directly from Adidas until PBOT resolves the homeless issue that is in the path of the planned bike lane. Adidas cannot proceed with its construction. It will be delayed until PBOT responds to the area time unknown. Thank you, Lee Hubler. Very nice. Um, my thought is, is that we should um, uh, vote to request that the city act upon the situation so that Adidas can finish the construction. This, this path is, that, that little segment, that little three, four block segment is all that's left between connecting uh, North Portland and St. John's Peninsula uh, with a somewhat protect, protected bikeway all the way to downtown. And Which least, part is out? Is it, where does it start? Like at the... Well, they're doing between Billingsworth? Willamette. They're doing, they're doing between Willamette and I believe all the way down to going. Yes, that's oh, correct. Okay. Yeah, that's a big chunk. So you're so bikers are gonna have to go out on the street. Well, yeah, and that's not great because the construction's taken out some of the uh, some of the space and things like that, and everything else is done. Um, and the good weather will bring the bikers back out uh, to a degree, even though people aren't working downtown as much right now. But I anticipate as the pandemic resolves, as the weather gets better, that we're going to see that finally get used. And we need it to be finished. I think the campsites in question are right about going and Greeley. Okay, the, on the um, uphill side of the intersection, gotta be. Yeah, and it's on the um, east uh, or west side. It's on the west side. Yeah, it's on the river road. side. The, yeah. Um, so you had said we would potentially write something. Do is that something that we want to do, or do you want to? What's, what, are you, what is your thought? I move that we write a letter to PBOT and copy in the commissioners, because I think we're going to have to on this one with everything else going on, um, asking for. Uh, can, I, can I interrupt this, and make a suggestion? Um, well, I want to finish the motion, then, okay, you, then you can. Yeah. That we write the letter to the city asking for them to. Um, make it so that Adidas can do their construction. That's my motion. Okay. Some writing. Yeah, a second. I'm, I'm not against the idea of writing the letter, but um, I think that it is something that Adidas does want to see move forward. And right now, there are some things that Adidas uh, isn't isn't moving forward with with their lights and, and situation that I propose that we approach them and say, we'd like for you, we'll, we'll pin the letter. We want you to have your signature on it, but we need you to address your lighting situation for the neighborhood. Hmm. You're talking about the light in the, in the buildings? Yeah, because I know right. they want this and I, and, I, and I understand the need for it and I think that it needs to happen. But so let's, okay, so let's. <laughs> I'd Do be willing we... to table it to the um, to the general meeting with the DITAS there. Okay, that was going to be one question. The other question was, do you want to add that amendment? <laughs> but it might be easier to table, yeah. Yeah. I, I so. th yeah. I think that <laughs> I think we we've got to do something. In, I, it can wait two weeks, but. I don't think it can wait much more, but yes, the lights need to go off. Um, yeah. Okay, so in that two weeks, um, Lee, you'll talk to Tom yeah, again. About yeah, the I've, I've talked with him the last couple of days, and I actually tried to get him to this meeting. Um, I'll, I'll work on getting him to the public one. Um, <clears throat> he, he, he's not opposed to it. I just, he, we couldn't, evidently, we couldn't get tonight to work out. Um, okay. And, and, and Brad, this is, Casey, this is Casey, I had a question. Would the, would the letter be authored just by the, the board here or are you looking to have Adidas included as a signature as well? Uh, no, I, I, well, I think it just comes from the board. Um, Adidas can send their own thing, but if we're not in agreement on other issues, I don't want to contaminate uh, that. Gotcha. 
otherwise I'm afraid it's going to get sucked into a different, you know, two different buckets and right. So in, okay. Yeah, I agree. I agree. In the, so in the next two weeks, so Lee will talk to Tom and tell him what we're, what the plan is that if he turns off the lights, <laughs> one of the stipulations, if he turns off the lights is we'll help with the letter. And then Brad, will you draft a, a letter that you can send out to the board so that we can sure. review it before the next yeah. meeting? Yep. Great. So uh, a quick update on the lights. Um, I, I did hear back from uh, Tom. I didn't love the response. Uh, effectively, he said, the issue is when they built that building, the lights were, the electrician, wire, uh, electrician company wired the lights wrong. So the auto timers are not working like the other buildings. And that's, <clears throat> excuse me, that's what effectively is keeping the lights on. Um, I don't really like that answer because it's just like, well, flip the breaker. Uh, and it doesn't really answer the question of lights on the field. Um, so it was, it was a pretty diplomatic dodge of the answer, which I'm going to push a little bit closer to. Um, that, that's as far as conversations gotten so far. Can you elaborate on, so bring us up to speed on what's so, going on and everything, because I don't think we ever talked about the lights. On the okay. Field. Yeah, sorry. I, I took for granted that everyone kind of knew the situation. Um, the new building, the lights and everything in it are staying on 24-7. Um, they're, they're not shutting off and they're not shutting off at night, um, which apart from being just a, a waste of energy um, is causing basically light pollution for the surrounding neighbors. Um, those those need, lights need to go off. Particularly so, on the soccer field because those are quite bright. Yeah. Um, so they, are the ones like illuminating the soccer field, is that what? Yeah. Yeah. And are those new? Yep. Yep. The field is brand new. And... And the uh, entire new building, that building is staying lit at night where, while the other ones go darker. And the lights that are on on the soccer field, are they all the way around it? I haven't been over there, um, so I haven't seen it for myself, but from what neighbors have written. I can yeah. tell you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. If oh, yeah, hi, uh, hi everyone, and hi Lee. I'm the person that wrote to you, one of the people that wrote to you about the lights, because I live right next to the project. And uh, the most recent uh, lighting issue is around the soccer field. And for some strange reason, what they've, it's not so much overhead lights shining down on the soccer field that I've noticed. It's that they've installed a very bright light that surrounds the soccer field and elsewhere at the base, like so where your feet are. So it, it runs the entire, you know, gamut. Of, mm. of the field and it's very, very bright. It's, it, I, it's beyond me. And uh, just one other note, I've been communicating with Tom since October when the lights went in on the South building close to me and have been assured every couple of months because I keep touching base with him that, oh yes, no, they're, they're all gonna be on timers and don't you worry, it'll just be a week or two. And this is the same story I've been hearing for both buildings now for a couple of months. So, so I, I am with you, Lee, that I don't think that answer from Tom, because I got the same answer from him again this week, basically exactly what you just said. Yeah. I, I don't think it's a great answer. I mean, you don't, you don't do up entire huge buildings like this and not check that your electrician's doing it the way you want it to be done. I mean, come on. Well, and even if that were the case and giving them the benefit of a doubt, flip the breaker. It's not like there's anyone in there at night. Just... Well, they have issues because they do have security that, you know, is constantly walking around in there. And I, I know that they do need lights for that person. Um, but yeah, I think it's a weak, I think it's a weak answer. And also the TVs, I don't know if you guys have seen there. I can watch their TVs from my room. That's how big they are. <laughs> and there's many of them in both buildings and they run 24 seven. I, I can ask them to turn the closed caption on for you. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Why would the TVs be on? A uh, good question, Brad. Yeah, they have okay. these big TVs that are constantly showing. Oh yeah, okay, that like I, ads I, or sure. Just, yeah, it's uh, like behind their front desks and on every floor, I think, or uh, at least on the first floors. Yeah, they're huge. I think they're on every floor in both buildings. 
so the, um, back to the soccer field lights is there a chance it's a ribbon board that's actually going to be used for advertising that's around the base of the oh uh like you would see at, at providence park where yeah i don't um, know i i don't know it's not very high like it's not very deep uh, but it, maybe yeah that's a good question it'd be like two two maybe two feet tall yeah maybe, maybe. Um, okay I just, just trying to get some yeah. perspective but those things when they're lit up bright uh it's painful to look at yeah I, I would say that those are the brightest lights right now that are that are on all the time yeah could you um if, if you can see them easily could you take a photo and send it to me uh yeah i th did i not send you that in my email i sure can i don't think it attached the photo i'm sorry oh yeah sure and this is lee right yeah yeah i sure can you bet i've got a good picture of both of them actually at night well of the buildings and then you can see the i'll try to take a close-up of the of the soccer field one and send that too okay. okay i think i saw them in your next door post didn't you yeah photos yes yes <laughs> that was quite bright that was quite bright that was me next yeah door post. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Thank you guys. Shar, what's your last name? So I can put you in here as at the meeting. Yeah, I put it in the, in the uh, yeah, chat. Put it's in chat. Charlotte, yeah. Charlotte Williams. Williams got it. Yeah, thank you. And the I only other one I don't have is Scott. Scott, who are you? Scott. Sorry. All right, go ahead, sorry. I was just doing catch up. Um, I, I did get quite a few emails about this over the last couple of weeks. Um, so I know that it's not just Charlotte. It's, it's many, many of the neighbors have written in. Oh, wow. Yeah, it sounds like we have a path forward. So let's, yep. um, we can talk to Tom and Brad can write up the letter about the cycle track and then next in two weeks, we'll, we'll revisit. Sound like a path Great. forward. Thank you. Great. Thanks, you guys. Um, <clears throat> Marcy. Yes. Since we skipped the meeting minutes, I think there are, <clears throat> there are two that we can prove, that we can prove, that we can approve. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm having major internet connection issues and I had to go find another computer. <laughs> no worries. <clears throat> I think so. it was the, I think we're able to do the, um, I was just looking at them. January 5th and January 19th. Yeah. Okay, I have a couple spelling errors that I know were pointed yeah, out. I spelled spell hard as you rang. I thought I corrected a bunch of those, so I might have sent out the one. Um, yeah, I spelled your name wrong and Hardesty's name wrong. Okay. And then also do good Multnomah and civic life, not civic live. <laughs> oh, hard, Hardesty, hard. Yes, oh, yeah, okay. I forgot the T. I okay, forgot. I didn't even notice that. Okay, hard to see. And then my name was Alessandra somewhere. Did you fix that one? Yes, I will. I have another set that I refixed all those last names that okay, I misspelled. Perfect. Okay, great. Okay, so can we make a motion to approve these two meeting minutes with the proposed changes? Can someone make a motion? This is Cynthia. I so move. Great, Cynthia, thanks. Second. I'll second. <laughs> Great, awesome. All right, any opposition to approving both of those? All right, they yeah, are the approved. The last name was spelled wrong in the second one. On the 19th? Uh, yes, that one that you Oops. just had. Over. Okay, got it. I will collect, I will correct all my uh, errors in name spelling. I thought that was probably already on your list. <laughs> all right, thank you. And then the next one, so, and then, and then Marcy sent out the one for, from last time. And so please review that one and we'll approve it at the next board meeting. Okay. Along with this one. All right, thank you. All right, school liaison discussion. We had a couple of people that were gonna call in, but I'm not seeing them on here. Do you? I know Cassie, you had somebody who was gonna call in and- No, I, I didn't ever hear confirmation that they were gonna call in. I let them okay. know that it would be um, great to tune in. So I, I don't have any major updates, but I do have someone who wrote interest. 
Okay. So do we, um, my question was, do we have one of the like one sheeters for the school liaison? Was that created before? I mean, I put in like two lines for the, okay. the board or for the, the documentation. I put in two lines for the school because I wasn't really sure what they did. Yep, I'm, I just um, wasn't sure what information to send her as far as more information about the position, what's required in the school liaison specifically. Yeah, um, can anybody, I, I, I couldn't really say either. <laughs> I just said they were the liaison with the schools basically, which was, you know, super clever. Um, but does anybody have any better documentation? I think I, I think I called out Beach and Trillium and that was about it. Who was the last uh, school John. person? John, I mean, before John. BJ, before John. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't remember. Okay. I thought their, um, their reason was to just kind of keep in contact with schools and let us know what was going on and possibly mm -hmm. invite them to meetings. But I don't really know exactly what their role was, to be honest. Yeah, yeah no, kind of similar. Yeah, I, th I think that's it. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, major events at the school that maybe the public's invited to kind of co-promotion publicity, that type of thing. Um, it's, okay. it's not, you know, so and so is now covering the third grade class for so and so, you know, it's not that kind of stuff, it's a, a little <laughs> higher level. Okay, well, maybe we can, Cassie, you and I can write up a little thing. Yeah, yeah, because I had Stacy Newsel, who was has been to a couple of meetings. She was interested, and then it sounds like you had somebody. So maybe we can just email both of them and say, "Hey, if you're interested, send a little blurb. We need to the board needs to vote to approve. Mm -hmm. And if you can come to the next meeting, that'd be great. Because yep, then we'll then that. we'll vote. So let's um, do that. I'm trying to find her name. Who had sent that? But I'm not easily finding it in my email. So I'll need to keep digging. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let's send it out to both of them. I'll send Stacy's email to you if you want to okay. manage it. Yep, and then we can ask them if they want to do a joint. We could do a co-lead <laughs> if you're interested. All right. Great. Anything else on the school liaison? No. Okay. All right. Casey, Hazelnut Grove update. All right, let me get my video back on if I can unlock the measure. Um, so hello everyone, Casey here. Uh, wanted to give everyone uh, a brief update as best I possibly can on the Hazelnut Grove update. It's the uh, camp, homeless camp that's on Greeley and Interstate. I think we all know about it. <clears throat> but um, my purpose here is to provide as much facts as far as where I know since uh, January. Um, you know, kind of chronological facts of what I know so far and kind of where things stand <clears throat> and then uh, uh, communications um, or lack thereof from the city and what we're proposing to do. Okay. So um, again, just kind of trip down memory lane. Uh, on January 5th, the Orlick Neighborhood Association Board submitted a letter to the city and the Joint Office of Homeless Services and Homelessness and Urban Camping and Impact Reduction Program. <laughs> yes, it's that long of a name. Um, outlining, and it's obviously public record, on um, the uh, Neighborhood Association's um, uh, proposal for uh, homelessness and um, as well as Hazelnut Grove to close, uh, stating a uh, various amount of reasons. <clears throat> um, I did not ever see if or hear if that was ever received or confirmed, but let's assume it was. Uh, and then in mid-January, uh, the residents in the Overlook Neighborhood Association received a letter um, to, that uh, outlined a transition of uh, Hazelnut Grove to St. John's and offering the residents of uh, Hazelnut Grove to uh, alternative housing or shelters. Uh, shelters. And I'm not sure if you all received that or not. I actually have uh, that documentation. Um, if it's worthwhile, uh, I could share it here um, on the on the screen, but uh, it was received as a mailer. It was a two-sided mailer that was uh, sent to all Overlook neighborhood residents, essentially saying, 
for the most part. Um, and uh, you can share it if you want. Yeah, I think good. we did um, get it because even I got it. So I'm okay. assuming that everybody okay. got so, it because uh, I'm like in an overlook. Yeah. So uh, essentially, I just, I'll just paraphrase for the most part is, you know, talk about the title is Hazelnut Grove Transition. You know, who it is, the residents of Overlook neighborhood uh, received this. What uh, the Hazelnut Grove is a self-organized homeless community between Greeley and Interstate. And um, over the past few months, the city of Portland will begin decommissioning and restoring the site while helping Hazelnut Grove residents move to new stable housing. And they outline why and the bullets of why it was essentially put for, uh, potential for hillside landslides, fire and life safety concerns, site accessibility and access, emergency vehicles, and a whole host of different things. So they also outline what's, uh, what's next and residents will re uh, begin relocating in uh, early February. And I'm not sure where I got this, but I heard by the end of uh, March, they will, uh, the site will be uh, decommissioned and uh, residents will uh, find uh, other locations. So that was the note letter from the city. I was actually surprised to see it. I didn't know it was coming, but uh, it was submitted by the city, okay? So that was uh, in uh, late January, mid to late January. And sometime in late January, and early February, <clears throat> there was an uh, advocates for uh, Hazelnut Grove and other groups that garnered petitions to keep Hazelnut Grove in place. And I, it's my understanding, and don't quote me on the specifics, but uh, there was a, um, a peaceful demonstration of sorts with these uh, petitions down at the city hall. And uh, what transpired from there, I don't know. But in February, um, this is again, I'm learning all this from really the media. Uh, there was a program, uh, OPB program on Think Out Loud, which is their noon program that had Commissioner uh, Ryan. And he was on there confirming that Hazel Grove was transitioning and provided you know, essentially the same reasoning behind it based off that letter. It was an intriguing you know, about 20, 30 minute uh, discussion, but it essentially re-emphasize what the letter kind of, or the uh, mailer provided. And then uh, in later in February, OPB and uh, OPB is just for the record is a, you know, say the NPR affiliated station here. Um, and then uh, Portland Tribune reported that the city may keep, may keep Hazelnut Grove and the services. However, there was a uh, contradiction between Commissioner Ryan's office and Mayor Wheeler's office on if this is actually going to happen, uh, keeping Hazelnut Grove, um, as well as uh, if the uh, decommissioning is actually going to take place. And the reason why it's confusion, because even the Portland uh, Tribune and the OPB didn't quite get, uh, uh, they had conflicting reports from both OPB and, uh, excuse me, from both the Commissioner Ryan's office and Wheeler's office. Hope you're all following along because it took me some time to put this all together. <laughs> so then let's fast forward to last week. Last week, um, um, I, uh, I learned that uh, through Portland Tribune that in another reversal, the city says Hazelnut Grove uh, can keep additional services and will uh, remain um, uh, a, a camp for the foreseeable future. And, uh, and the Portland Tribune, which um, I can uh, post here in the comment area, again, if I, I, I believe I sent this off to everyone before, but I just, for the record, here it is. Uh, it provides more of the details of a letter that was sent by Wheeler's office to, um, and I'm not sure how it's, how it's posted or how it was provided or even served to the residents of Hazel Grove, but essentially saying that um, uh, indefinitely, uh, services will be uh, provided to Hazelnut Grove as well as the uh, fencing um, and uh, other services that the tax uh, taxes are provided for Hazelnut Grove indefinitely. So before that even happened, I uh, asked, I sent a letter or a, an email to um, the city just asking them, can we give some kind of update for the Overlook Neighborhood Association? Uh, so we can provide not only ourselves, but the uh, uh, residents if they ask what's going on. Um, the only one who responded was, um, let's see here. Uh, the only one who responded, <clears throat> forgive me, um, was, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't the city or the, um, it was the, uh, the, the city and the joint uh, office of homeless services. They were the ones that said, uh, thanks received. I'm not sure what that meant, but essentially they, they did at least receive the, the, the note and the question that I asked about what's going on with Hazelnut Grove. So I'm still confused um, as far as where things stand with Hazelnut Grove, meaning uh, I'm basing a lot of this on of, of, um, uh, the Portland Mercury. And, and uh, if, it's, if it's indeed true, then, um, then Hazelnut Grove will stay uh, indefinitely um, as, as, it, as it stands. Um, I ha have been asked to be interviewed by the Portland Mercury to get our stance, uh, our, the uh, Orthodox Neighborhood Association stance on uh, the kind of reversal here. <coughs> and I, I uh, responded to the reporter, but didn't provide any comment. I just like to asking them um, what, what questions that they have and what's their deadline. Otherwise, I, uh, I want to get more uh, insights from the city before I make that uh, comment at any capacity on based off the uh, Overlook Neighborhood Association. And so uh, in the last part here, two more pieces here, is that uh, tomorrow at, um, the city uh, council has a meeting which three people are gonna be speaking on behalf of Hazelnut Grove uh, on the agenda, first part of the agenda at 9.30. And I'm going to be listening in on that piece. Um, I, I submitted a request to actually speak as well, but it was uh, denied because we only have five slots on the panel to speak. So um, I preemptively um, uh, asked to speak next Wednesday on the 10th, just to, so I can give some kind of, uh, uh, ask questions, give some kind of update because they're not necessarily communicated through through email. So with all that being said, I know I've said a, a mouthful here and I hope you guys are tracking all of the different things I said, but uh, as I understand right now, uh, the Hazelnut Grove will stand um, as is with no changes um, indefinitely. Yeah. <laughs> so, any, uh, uh, any questions? So you yeah. could do written testimony, right? Did you submit written testimony to the, wasn't there a spot for written testimony at the tomorrow's meeting? At the tomorrow's there is, meeting? There is a, <laughs> a spot for written testimony, but I, I don't necessarily know what I'm asking for yet. Um, Cause I, I, I ever asked when we get confirmation. Gotcha. Um, and so I, I don't, I'm, it's really kind of hearsay in, in a way. I'm, I'm banking on that this is really from uh, the per Portland Mercury. That's the only communication that I've, I've received. Uh, I, gotcha. I trust okay. the media about as far as I can throw it. So I want to first listen to that piece and then I can uh, submit uh, rest of the testimony. And then hedging that, I can uh, talk if necessarily next, um, next Wednesday. And what's that? The next is it just another meeting, or it's another? Yeah, it's another uh, city council meeting, but at least offers uh, public uh, comment. Great, thank you. What I'll say, I don't know yet. Um, you know, I, I don't necessarily want to speak on behalf of uh, Overlook Neighborhood Association, uh, and I want to make sure that I'm uh, refraining from providing any kind of uh, uh, personal input or conjecture of any sort because I know it's an incredibly sensitive subject. But I do feel that we were not communicated to, and it's. Um, can, uh, counter to anything that the city has provided for us and to the residents of, of um, Overlook. Uh, and it's essentially been a 180 um, from what they said they're going to do to what we're reading here in the media. So uh, if nothing else, I want to get clarity and you know, show frustration and confusion on behalf of the, of the residents of Overlook Neighborhood Association. And we do have the approved letter, so you can, pr you can pull from that if you want to speak on. Perfect. The path. Perfect. Yeah, that approved letter. So one of the things, if I remember right, that we put in there was it doesn't happen. It doesn't have to happen tomorrow type of thing. Uh, we understand that there's a pandemic going on and that people, you know, we're not proposing that people weren't able to be relocated into other housing and things like that. So, yeah, this is interesting. Um, did you get a feel for where the St. John's project, which was delayed, but I think it's supposed to open next week, isn't it? It's supposed to open next week. So there, it would allow for residents of Hazelnut Grove to, if they so choose, to go uh, have a place at in St. John's. It's my understanding uh, next week, uh, based on my own you know, research. Yeah, I was surprised the city actually was working on uh, closing this down as quick as they were, but I'm, I'm, 
I think there's a reasonable expectation that if you leave those places vacant, that somebody else is going to come and take them. Um, potentially, potentially, but uh, it just yeah, uh, I, very strange that they went they went as far as sending out a mailer. Yeah, um, and, it was, and uh, you know, I was nice surprised mailer. by it, like, wow, here, this this got real, this got yeah. real, and then within less than a month, a complete reverse change of course and no communication to the residents. So what are we supposed to do um, uh, to this end? And you know, is there any? Yeah, I got a, I got a feeling it was the, the funding issue was part of it. And it was like, well, Wheeler said, well, I'm not gonna fund it out of my budget. And Hardesty said, well, it's Peabot. So, um, you know, Peabot come finds that much money. And it's like, is that what this was all about? Yeah, so still a, um, a uh, unsanctioned camp, unsafe camp, oh. Um, is still existing and uh, uh, on the corner here, right. and uh, so the the reasons they outline of why they're removing it uh, still exist. So if a fire takes place or some other issues take place, then I don't know what that really means. Regardless, we want to talk about from homelessness. Uh, this this piece still um, is an issue and, and still in place. So. Again, I don't want to be too opinionated or provide much more conjecture than that, but the facts are confusing at best and their, their uh, pivot toward this end. Um, I can't speak intelligently on, on the why, besides I can make some assumptions. So. I didn't just to let you know that I did not receive a mailer from the city about this. I'm not okay. sure if everyone else did. But. So I can, I can post it real quick. Um, let me see. Uh, I didn't oh, get I share. just I just wanted to let you know because I don't think it would would have been sent to uh, oh. to every address, you know. I'm yeah, that's true. No, maybe that's true. sent to the triangle. We got it. I was sent up here. I got it. She's she's on the north end. Uh, and I'm like, George, I'm hold it up a little higher there. Yeah. Huh. I, I, I can't. I still can't share. Oh. Um, <clears throat> I, but I have it here if necessary. Nice. <laughs> This is Michael. I just had a quick question in regards to, I think it was the last meeting uh, that we had where we were discussing a city planning uh, zoning change, I guess, that, that had talked about allowing uh, homeless individuals to find any public land and take residence. Um, I, I couldn't find that uh, on, on the web. I just wondered, uh, just thinking out loud, was wondering if there was any connection to, to that piece. but. Um, yeah, uh -huh. thanks, thanks, Michael. That we, we did post. It was on uh, the Overlook Neighborhood uh, website. Okay. Uh, more details on it. Uh, if you may just peruse through a little bit, and we can use the, the search function. But um, uh, our former co-chair, uh, Chris Trable, uh, posted uh, those details. That's and as right. far as if there's a linkage between the two, I don't know. Yeah, don't know. that's that was just there, a, there, a, there might be, but you're, you know, you're probably right. But I uh, it wasn't, you know, that. Uh, was not articulated and we may one can assume, but I, you know, also who knows, <laughs> but, but thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. It wasn't been, mentioned in the Tribune either. So. Yeah. It's been quiet in the media for about three weeks on that. Uh, after I thought Dan Ryan was going to roll it out, but I don't know what happened. Right. Um, so as a one person uh, committee member here on the homeless update committee, I'm just going to provide just the, the updates uh, as, I, I, as I provide and I will do so as, as soon as I find out. But the really only next steps here is I'm going to sit in tomorrow on the city council meeting to listen. Because there's only going to be, I think, three people are going to speak in on behalf of Hazel and Grove. Are they for or against? I don't know. No, I don't necessarily even care. But I'm with, what I'm mining for is uh, the why behind the, 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 the change. And then uh, if I get more information from that and a response from the city, uh, then I will um, keep my speaking spot, <laughs> which I believe is only two or three minutes, for next Wednesday, and then uh, use as a, a, an effort to get clarity uh, and hopefully get some uh, form of um, next steps because right now it's, it's unclear. I'm frustrated, you know, personally, I'm um, frustrated for whatever it's worth. I, I'm close to the park. We've all, almost had two fires uh, near our neighborhood because of this and I can, I can attest to it. And uh, the city not doing it is, uh, is nothing short of frustrating. And 
regardless of what you want to say about homelessness, um, the, uh, the safety and soundness of it all, it's, it's, it's not good. But that's just me being my personal opinion. <laughs> No, we appreciate all the all the time and effort that you're putting into this. So that's all I have. Any other questions for transition? Any on? additional questions? All, all right. right, yeah, de definitely. Let us know how that goes. We'll do. We'll do. <laughs> Thank appreciate you for all it. the work. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for all the work, and let us know how your interview goes too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, real quick, uh, if I can, um, mm -hmm. I in an attempt to um, with with media, Chris Trabel before did a lot of the media interviews, right? And Chris was front and center on different parts. We will forever be in his um, debt for all the efforts and time they've done. And, you know, God bless Chris for all his great work for Overlook Neighborhood in general. Uh, I personally don't want necessarily my name attached to any piece of you know a homelessness you know of sorts i have a business i have a family and the sensitivities that run through this and so if i do go on record um, with the uh, media in some capacity i want to go as a spokesperson on behalf of over the neighborhood association not as casey boggs and i hope you all can appreciate that just in uh, just because uh, there's too much downside not upside to having my name out there um, and I'm going to try to be as diplomatic and uh, neutral and just, you know, factual as possible. But as far as a, um, at all for seen as a uh, advocate for or against, it's, uh, it's doesn't behoove me personally. So, uh, but I certainly want to um, do my part for the Overlook Neighborhood Association to uh, provide statement uh, as, as necessary. So I'm going to uh, be a spokesperson, but hopefully there's a safe spokesperson, not Casey Box. That makes sense. And we, yeah, I think that makes sense. And we, I mean, I know you have the letter, so I think yep. just, just use the letter and I think. Just use the letter. Yep. That's fine. Yep. I, I think the All one. Right. Well, thanks. And thank you, Casey. I, I hear you. And one thing that I think would be helpful is if you do have a, uh, I didn't discuss this with Chris at the time, but I probably should have. And that would be is if you are speaking on behalf of the neighborhood association, just to give the give the board a heads up that you did, um, so that we can be aware, and with a like three sentence highlight of what you talked about. Uh, we don't. I don't need verbatim, but if I go, oh, so and so is on here. It's nice for me to hear it from you rather than hear it from the media. Absolutely, yeah. So. Um... Uh, fully agree. Can you guys hear me okay? Because I had some yeah. uh, disconnection, but um, uh, I fully agree. Um, it, 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 oddly enough, I'm, <clears throat> I'm in the world of public relations, and so I advocate for <laughs> telling, you know, taking an inside-out approach here to make sure that you are communicated to first before I make any communications to the media. Um, I did forward on a, a response recently um, that was asked from the, re uh, the media. I don't necessarily know what the best process or uh, policy is before I speak on behalf, but um, I'll do my best to make sure this is what I'm planning to send uh, or make a statement on behalf of them and uh, hopefully give us as much time to respond. Um, and if there's no response, then I'll, I'll proceed. Or if there is, you know, tweaks that need to be made, that's okay. But I'd prefer it would be, again, on the backing of uh, the Overlook Neighborhood Association than just mm -hmm. uh, World According to Casey. Makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for the update and thanks for all your work. All right, let's see, next on the agenda, community outreach, Cassie. Um, I know that, I think it was in January, we had a meeting that had quite a few neighbors in it and many of them expressed a desire for us to utilize Facebook for public posting I wouldn't say that we post a lot to Nextdoor um, anyways, but we at some point made a decision to choose Nextdoor over Facebook. And based on that meeting and a lot of neighbors requesting Facebook as a news, a neighborhood news source, I was wondering if that is something that we can add formally. Um, I don't typically, when I send out the newsletter, I just email it. And we've always encouraged people to sign up for that. 
but people have continued to ask for Facebook. I've gotten Facebook. I, I, I am on the, um, Chris added me to the next, uh, sorry, to the Facebook for Overlook. So I've gotten a few messages there from neighbors requesting that we use that source. Um, I don't know what else I would be posting other than the newsletter link once a week, but if there are things that come up, we can, that typically we've posted to Nextdoor, I'm wondering if we can also post that to Facebook based on neighborhood feedback. I mean, all I post to Nextdoor is are yeah. the meeting, yeah. <laughs> meeting notices. Exactly. And then and, I post the, the, the communications the first. Too, um, it's a quick link to the meeting. Yeah, I mean, it's so, I think when we had that discussion previously, it was a matter of bandwidth, right? Bandwidth and usefulness. So uh, yeah, I think it's just, it is usefulness because I don't want to go out of my way to be finding things to be posting that I'm not posting elsewhere. Um, but if it's a matter of taking one extra minute to post that same link to Facebook as you did to Nextdoor, um, I, I think that's something that we could probably accommodate. Yeah, so what do, what do people think? I mean, as long as you have bandwidth, I don't think we were opposed to posting on yep, Facebook. Exactly. And I think it was just a matter of people didn't feel like they had time, so. Yeah, I think that's that when it, it comes to posting the newsletter that I send out, I, I can post a link directly to that to Facebook as well. And if there's anything that comes up that we would post to Nextdoor, I'd just ask that we try to remember to also post it to Facebook. I like yeah. that. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, makes sense. Thank you. Just, just keep the postings, you know, the same so that yeah, exactly all the information, yeah. Do you get the LinkedIn, <clears throat> the LinkedIn ones I send out? Or LinkedIn, hello. <laughs> oh, good, there's a new one. <laughs> Do you get the uh, Nextdoor ones? Um, I don't use Nextdoor very often. So for me, I would see, personally, I would see Facebook more than Nextdoor, but okay. I think people are different. And I think that's the, what neighbors were proposing is that some people don't use one or the other. Okay. <laughs> well, all I do is send, like I said, I send mm -hmm. the, I put in the meeting invite and then I put in a notice for communications help. And that's been it. So yep. anytime I post on there, I'll let you know, and I'll, and you can just copy it. Okay, if that works. Yeah, next door is next door is definitely informative. But boy, it's uh, depressing as well. Sometimes, yeah, <laughs> oh. for sure. Yeah, it's nuts. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you. I think it would also be great if we can. Um, I think it, it's in our bylaws that we need to post meetings at least three days before the meeting. Mm, okay. So, you so know, Sundays are two. Oh, yeah, Sunday. Yeah, Sunday would be a day to post both on Nextdoor and Facebook, which we do. Yeah, I typically yeah. send out the newsletter by Sunday. Sometimes I do it on oh, okay. Sunday, but I didn't know that about posting three days before, so I can keep that in mind. Yeah, I thought it was three. Yeah, uh, I think she said it was two. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Maybe it's three. We always send it out by Sunday oh. for a Tuesday meeting. All right, well, thank you. Power polls on the bluff. Yeah. So- Mystery one. Yeah, I received, uh, and this is off of, this came off next door, but this sounded familiar. So this is um, Joe, I assume it's Roe, but it could be Rao, uh, who lives in Arbor Lodge, but is also, I think he lived in Overlook at one point and tends to be a little, demanding uh like as things start with call the mayor you know <laughs> why, why dink around but the issue here is um i need to grab this um over here um high voltage power lines added curtis villard avenue to swan island and um so they're over 150 feet tall, six stories tall, poles being rushed into Arbor Lodge starting at, at Lombard. And this has to do supposedly with uh, getting Amazon up at Delta Park, new, new power, which, which certainly could be true. I have no idea. 
however, why I'm bringing this up is the uh, reason that we have 20 something thousand dollars in the bank at this point um, is because we received a settlement from PGE and the city, I believe it was split, um, when the PGE put power lines and poles up in the Killingsworth section, coming up the bluff with no permits or anything like that. And they just kind of walked in and did it. And then we said, uh, no, you can't do that. And uh, threatened to go legal. And then they quickly uh, said, could we offer you some money? Um, I was just curious if anybody had heard anything more about this because they kind of got one shot about this in, the, in February 10th and then it was quiet. And this is Arbor Lodge's problem, but we've been down this road and it kind of sounds like they almost went around us this time. <laughs> so just was kind of wondering. You know, contact at PG. <laughs> well, yeah, I was like contact PGE, contact the mayor and all that kind of stuff. And it's kind of like, uh, yeah, I mean, I can't go dig up the old notes and all that. Um, it's, we have our own issues. <laughs> it's not our problem. Good contact Arbor Lodge. Uh, yeah, so I was just curious if anybody had heard anything about this. No, not me. If, it, if I might ask, where did you hear it from? Uh, off next door. Oh. And it was just, it was one of those, uh, yeah, it popped into my email and I went and looked at it off there and uh, that was it. So, um, okay. Just a, a quick question on that, Brad. Um, when we have issues that actually straddle or reach into complete other neighborhoods, mm -hmm. um, have you in the past or have, have other members reached out to the uh, news or to the uh, neighborhood group uh, in, in those areas? We did have, um, yeah, we were actually trying that uh, prior to the pandemic and having, we had a couple of um, uh, social events uh where were those at i'm trying to remember we also have worked um there's like the land use there was a land use um group that used to meet and that was a bunch that was the land use chairs from the different neighborhood associations there was a transportation one that was really i think useful and mm -hmm. i think maybe those have gone by the wayside with the pandemic but those were yeah. beneficial so and the chairs still meet and the chairs meet yesterday we had a meeting that i forgot to go to so there have been times when we worked together on things. Um, I think the we did have some conversation with Arbor Lodge as far as the bus lanes on Greeley, just kind of an awareness, if nothing else, to make sure we we're both on top of it. So I can forward that along to, uh, I think it's probably Ginger is still the- No, Ginger's gone. Oh, Ginger's gone. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know who the chair is? I have to find out who the, who the chair is of Arbor Lodge. I forget. You want me to send it to you, uh, Alexandra? And, yeah, I can send it to the North Portland chairs and ask. And, and I work with Ginger um, on parks issues. She's the Arbor Lodge Parks Point person as I'm for Overlook. And historically, of course, we worked with Arbor Lodge neighborhood um, when I organized the tree plantings. So we have quite a history of working together. Now they lead the cleanup. That's the other thing, right? Right. Yeah, send that to me, Brad, and I will uh, forward it on. Thanks. See if we can get some answers. I mean, we can go dig up our records if they really want to see it. I'm, I'm sure it's sitting in my 10 years of email <laughs> somewhere. Uh, and it's probably, I mean, it was Kent Hoddick. Uh, this is a, that was a big hot yeah. button for him. I mean, they can inform us if they want, or we can inform them if they want to get yeah. stuff they can ask. Okay, anything else on that? Any other questions? Well, so I, if I might ask, so they're gonna be putting this in, or they, they haven't done it already. I don't think I have been out there in the last two weeks, but uh, that would basically be on the north side of the dog bowl, relatively. Uh, yeah, I don't know the specifics. Well, it's sort of Villard and yeah, Curtis or whatever. Yeah, I think that's that where they put in the uh, traffic diverters and whatnot. Right, up in that area, which is just just north of the dog bowl. 
yeah and of course the one uh, the other one that that kent uh, spearheaded the uh, indignation on it was basically almost in his front yard and i believe that had to do with the big pipe didn't it it was a uh, an alternate power route for the big pipe uh, pumping Correct. station down there on swan island Correct. and they just kind of yeah shuffled that in there and hope nobody noticed well it's a little bit too big to not notice so Okay. And, and we'll and see if they want to if they want to do anything about it. Let's let's uh, because if it's not in our neighborhood, I don't want to. Yeah, we, we have enough. Push, <laughs> you know what I mean. But if they want help, then we I think we can provide them with assistance. That works. All right, let's go um, on to the next item quickly. Board documentation. Somebody forgot to send it out. Well, it's almost done. Um, I'm going to send it out after this meeting. It's, I just need to pull in a, a couple more uh, updates on the board documentation and then I will send it out. What I would like to do is have everybody review it uh, before the next general meeting and then maybe we can approve it then in two weeks. Yeah, would you mind explaining for the folks who are, might not know what that is? Sure, the board documentation is basically just a, a document for the Overlook Neighborhood Association that lists out all the different committees and the, the four executive positions and describes what all of those different roles do and committees do, roles and responsibilities so that if somebody, if somebody in the future takes one of those positions, they will, they will have a head start in being able to to implement, so they're not just <laughs> starting from scratch. So it would be sort of a continuity folder. It's kind of a continuity thing, exactly. Mm -hmm. So that, like I said, I will send that out hopefully tomorrow, and then uh, if we can approve it at the next meeting, that would be fabulous. And then in the in that period, send me any changes that you that you want to see. So. All right, thanks for that. All right, we're on to board reports. Last but not least, anybody have an update? Alan? Oh. Everybody got their newsletter. We got it. I got two, I always get two. <laughs> Front and the back of my house. <laughs> we can thank the weather for being late. We should have been out our couple weeks before, but the weather came in and right the schedule. I got mine. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. Thanks here. for doing that. Did uh, is there anybody here who did not get <laughs> the newsletter? Oh. Okay. Nice. What'd you do Great. wrong, Michael? Uh, I've asked for it a few times. I I I think I'm un unliked by somebody. <laughs> you can supposedly, have my my extra copy. <laughs> supposedly, we delivered to everybody. So uh, whether they want it or not, almost. So yeah, I haven't seen it in well, I've lived here for in this location for about uh, 11 years. And wow. what, what, street, you, uh, what street are you on? I'm on Burridge right across from Blend. Ah, that's strange. Wow. Yep, that is weird. Alan, get your uh, volunteers on it. <laughs> I figured it was a volunteer thing, so I wasn't going to push complain but uh, i have seen the sporadically seen the digital copy no yeah i think cassie you posted it right yeah i posted it this week um yeah but i did have a question about this because chris had given me the schedule for this whole time so i was working off of dates that he gave me but i have no idea what to do in the future as far as dates for future editions i I thought we were just going every three months. And are those dates like scheduled ahead of time, or do we just kind of who decides that about as far as? We just always yeah done every three. I don't know maybe about Alan, you have months. a better idea. But we've always months. just done every okay every three months around like the middle of the month or the beginning of the month. It used to be the beginning of the month, but now it's changing around it's later. Um, who controls that? Is it us? 
or do we actually have a date we have to have it to the printer? Yeah, Chelsea does most of it, but yeah, depends on you guys to give it to Chelsea. Okay, good point. Yeah. Speaking of Chelsea, good good segue though. Um, I'll take my report here and say. I realized that, okay, so we had said we were going to pay uh, Chelsea $150 an issue uh, for her services. And that would add up to exactly $600 a year, which buys you a 1099. I asked her and said, do you want to go a little less? It's totally up to you. And she said she would prefer to go a little less. So I'd like to move to uh, change the amount of payment to the person that, uh, I don't know, they used to be typesets, <laughs> hmm. uh, our additions, uh, down to $149 from $150. <laughs> okay. What's a 1099? Oh, a 1099, that would be like, uh, uh, she's a Excellent. contractor. Yeah, okay. so it's a, there's what, a threshold. 600 yeah. bucks a year, then uh, that's the threshold and you have to issue a 1099 like 1099 for 600 bucks from one business to another business or person who is our second i second that okay mercy <laughs> or the cost by a dollar does anybody anybody makes, opposed? makes sense though, i get it and, and that way i have it in the record and i can actually just authorize the payment without having to go do all the extra stuff so that's why it also helps Thank you. Makes sense to me. Okay. Uh, Brad, any other? Uh, okay. No. I should be getting, but, I assume, a bill for that coming up soon. So uh, uh, it should be coming through the email. Have you worked with her to have her send you the bill, or should I follow up with her? Uh, if it doesn't come to me this time uh, to the, the treasurer at Overlook, then um, I'll bug her. Okay. I think it's coming, but um, it, it, we may have lucked out and it's, it's going to be delayed a month just because they're billing cycle. Thanks, Brad. So pr procedurally, uh, it, it might have been a glitch on, on my end here. So that, that went through. You basically, you said that no objections, none heard, passed. Yep. Well, okay. Yeah. You, yeah. you just My said apartment. it, George. Thank you. <laughs> you didn't. You didn't object, so it passed. <laughs> <laughs> you, you didn't hear it, and, but you that that was right. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Brett. Uh, Michael, do you have an update? No. No. No updates. Okay. Thanks. Casey, any additional? Okay. <laughs> Caroline, got any? Unmute. No. <laughs> Oh, is it? Carolyn, is that Spalding, you got any? <laughs> are you are you, are you going to change change it to George? I, I, I mean, I, I didn't this time, but I sh I will. Okay, go for it, George. I, George and Marcy, any uh, updates on okay. safety? Well, the uh, the last um, PSAC meeting, which would have been uh, Tuesday, uh, excuse me, Thursday, the third Thursday uh, on uh, February eighteenth. Uh, I wasn't able to get into it on Zoom. I tried four or five times. I actually uh, called Akimi and uh, she said they had some issues to begin with. And as I was talking to her, they were actually into it. And so she said, try, try again. And so I did a couple more times. And I, I still couldn't get in. So uh, it might have been operator on my part. So uh, the next one, uh, supposedly, because uh, I can get the, the notes from the meeting either uh, will be the third Thursday here in March, which should be the 18th. And that will be from uh, seven to 8 PM more or less. And so the, uh, to get their information, you go to uh, their, you can email them at psac.nne.pdx at gmail.com. Shall I repeat that? Marcy, did you get that? I think Marcy- I got that know. actually. I think I, yeah, I think I put that in the notes for January if people wanted to join. Perfect. So that email's okay. in there. Okay. 
So I, I can repeat it again if you'd like, or why not? PSAC.NNE.PDX at gmail.com. And then they'll, they'll send out an invite, much like uh, we do here with the OKNA. Uh, the other bit was the Public Safety Action Coalition. And uh, I believe uh, their next one is going to be, because the one that I, I actually tuned into was uh, February 9th. And that was 9.30 a.m. So they do theirs during the day, uh, 9.30 to about 11.30. And uh, Mark Wells, who used to be very active here in uh, Overlook and whatnot, um, is the uh, uh, chair on that. And you can uh, get a hold of him at pdxpsac at gmail.com. That's pdxpsac at gmail.com. And theirs is not uh, one of the city done. It's a, a not-for-profit, but it's a standalone public safety action coalition. So it's not the committee. It's the public safety action coalition that's in Old Town, Chinatown, and whatnot uh, over there, kind of adjunct to the Pearl and whatnot. And so they have some interesting stuff going on, uh, but it's mainly geared to their side of the street. Uh, they, at the meeting, they had Robert King from the mayor's public safety office uh, talking about all the trials and people, tribulations uh, with the riots and whatnot. That's diverted a lot of resources and taken up a lot of time. Uh, that, that, I think, was one of the main, main things in that particular meeting. So... Uh, like I said, that next one will be March 9th at 9.30 a.m. That's the uh, Tuesday, the, the second Tuesday of, uh, of this month. And okay. I think that's about it. Okay. Oh, my name got changed. Thank you very Thank you. much. You're very welcome. <laughs> Whoever tickled those keys. Okay. Not a problem. All right. Cool. Thanks, George. You're welcome. Oh, oops, I just... Lost everybody. Oh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> Cynthia, any updates? Uh, yeah, just that um, because of the incredible storm, ice, and snow that we had, we lost, I think we're going to lose um, a significant tree at Patton Square Park. It destroyed um, more than half of the tree. Um, we lost a lot of big branches of the trees in Overlook Park. And I talked to the supervisor for maintenance for North Portland and she said they have 300 separate um, work, uh, what would they call it? Work orders. Orders, thank you. Work orders that they're um, working on. And so eventually they will get to Patton Square Park and Overlook Park. So if you see stuff coming um, on, on the ground at our parks, don't worry, they they know about it. They're on it. It's just taking them a real long time. Um, they are so stretched. So anyway, that's my only. Seems thing. it seems like somebody with a uh, chainsaw could get a lot of wood. Yeah. Right now. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> Sad about that tree. Yeah, I, it was not um, one of the heritage trees in Patton Square Park, so we, we lucked out that way. Thank God. Yep. All right, well, we'll look out for some chopping. Thanks, Cynthia. Uh, Cassie, anything else? Um, nope, not from my side. All right, Grant. Uh, yeah, I got a few things. Um, First off, uh, the Portland Harbor Collaborative, uh, which is for the, for the super fun site on the Willamette. Um, they're kind of kicking off sort of a new phase of this collaborative group. Uh, and I think the first meeting is next Wednesday, the 10th, um, where they're gonna kind of, I think, give an overview of the super fund and kind of where the project is at in certain places across the river. Um, and also, 
uh, talk about sampling for the Cathedral Park project area, because um, I think DEQ is actually taking that on themselves. Um, so if anyone's interested in that, that'll be next Wednesday. Uh, and you do have to RSVP by the 8th. Um, other things, uh, the letters- Can you send me something on that so I can send it out? Oh yeah, I can pour it. Next door or something. Um, okay. And then uh, the letter that we sent to Union Pacific is out, uh, still waiting for a response from them. Um, but I did meet with um, several other uh, representatives from different neighborhood associations with similar letters that were facilitated by uh, Greg and Cascadia Action and Portland Clean Air. Um, so I forwarded those to Alexander. I don't know if you were able to share them with the rest of the board. Um, and if now would be a good time to talk about that, but um, there's about eight letters from six different neighborhood associations, I believe. Um, and they're kind of all looking for uh, additional endorsements. Uh, similarly, like our, the letter that we sent to Union Pacific had, I think about 30 endorsements from other neighborhood associations and community groups. Um, and so the intent there is just to kind of just show and express solidarity, um, seeing as uh, other neighborhood associations will send similar letters to polluters in their backyard, but obviously, you know, we all kind of breathe the same air. So we all have some investment in um, cleaning up air pollution. Um, and some of the letters have already been sent, uh, but they still request endorsements just because um, as, as, you know, community groups are uh, negotiating with polluters, um, if they have an updated letter that shows more people are becoming aware of the issue and expressing their support, it just helps them uh, kind of leverage that in negotiations. So uh, I have a, a really nice summary they provided of all the letters they currently are looking to have endorsed um, that I can share, or I shared with Alexandra and I can um, have her send that to the board to look over. But um, yeah, they're all pretty similar to kind of the letter we sent out last month. Yeah, so what do we usually do in those situations? Do we usually endorse uh, different letters? Never. Uh, you know, we would like, like Grant said, we, we wrote one that's similar. We wrote one and sent it to Greg, but these are slightly different, right? So from recollection and people who've been on for a while, do we, would we do something like that? I mean, so we already sent our letter, but then endorsing the other neighborhood associations letters. Yeah. I think we usually did either or, but not both. Um, I, I mean, I think once we've made our point, there's no point we could sign on to the other folks and just kind of annoy them with 30 different letters of the same. I mean, to stuff. clarify, the, their, the other letters are to other like corporations. So ours was to Union Pacific oh, about okay. the, the rail yard in our backyard. But for example, Linton is um, sending letters to BP, Chevron and other, um, you know, people that run the tank farms in their neighborhood. So they're, they'd be to different corporations, different industries. Um, they're all kind of with the express purpose of cleaning up air pollution and chemical um, mm -hmm. pollution. So you probably remember like the bullseye glass uh, yeah. you know, article. So there's other neighborhoods still dealing with those types of things. So Got it. It, it, these are not to Union Pacific. They're addressing other similar, but other neighborhood issues. As in other neighborhoods. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. Now. We, Sorry about that. Should we send out the summary of them and, and the letters and just see? Yeah, I think the summary would be helpful for everyone to at least just look over and that way there's a bit more context. I don't think there's a huge rush because like I said, some of these might have already been sent and they're just kind of, you know, hoping to represent more people mm -hmm. um, addressing these issues. Okay. Yeah, if you'll send out the I can send out, you sent it to me, right? Yeah, you should have it. I can resend it to you if you need it. Okay, I can send it out. I'll send it out the summary and the letters to the board, and then we can, uh, since we are having a 
general meeting, we can talk about the letters at the general meeting. Cool. Yeah, and I think I, I'm now in contact with several other sort of my counterparts, I guess, at other neighborhood associations. So I think I'll kind of be keeping in touch with them moving forward. And there's some citywide um, goals that I think Greg is working on. Um, they're looking to kind of collect uh, air sampling data for the whole city. Apparently that has never really been done. There's been like localized testing, um, but in order to get a more accurate understanding of the air quality in Portland, uh, they're trying to basically test the air across the entire city and you have to take the readings at the same exact time, the same day, the same time period. So they are looking to get a group of bikers. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't think there's a, a date set, but if anyone knows of a, a crew, a biking crew that would want to collect data for Portland Clean Air, um, yeah, that is- yeah, Jonathan, Jonathan Moss. Okay, yeah. Like out loud. Yeah, feel free to email me if you think of anyone. You might be good. I think he runs mm -hmm. Spike Out Loud, right? It might be great. I can send you his info. Sweet. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Marcy, last but not least, do you have anything? I have nothing. All right. Uh, anything else then for the good of the order before we leave one minute late? <laughs> Did I miss the discussion about um, parking around Adidas? Were we going to do anything about that? No. No. Just let it expire? Yeah. And they're taking out the polls already at the end of the month. Okay. I did get that good to back. Know. Yeah. And, but I think we'll probably want to chat with Adidas about that. Hopefully they will come to our meeting. If we're not, we'll chat without them. Yeah, we're inviting them to the meeting. So hopefully he yeah. comes. To the yeah, November the meeting? I'm no. sorry, the March meeting? <laughs> oh my. <laughs> I was thinking. I wish. Thinking ahead. <laughs> the yes, March um, genu general meeting, which is the 17th or the 16th? It's the 16th. 16th. 16th, 16th. got it. Got it. Um, and if anybody has any additional agenda items for that, so we'll have Adidas, hopefully we have, um, we'll talk about these, the sustainability letters, uh, the document, documentation, we are going to have somebody come and present, who was asked to present on a new bond for housing, I believe. Um, so if anybody has anything else, uh, send it to me in the next couple of weeks. Was there any land use going on? I see anything. Okay. I'm, I'm not no, surprised. Yeah. <laughs> not much as seems to be going. Yeah. Yeah. Over here in, in my neck of the woods, it's actually been down for oh, oh, over a week. The old uh, credit union on the oh, southeast corner yes. of Killingsworth and Interstate is now completely gone. Where it stood is now just gravel and rubble. The, the parking lot is still there. Uh, there's a good sized track hoe and a couple of other pieces of equipment. I have no idea exactly what kind of timeline the, that they're looking at to actually start construction on the, the next monstrosity. Excuse me, uh, um, magnificent addition to the neighborhood mm -hmm. with zero on site parking. Thank you very much. And I also noticed that there are, there's a, um, a back hoe and three track hoes. Two good sized ones and a small one uh, down at um, Interstate and Alberta on the northeast corner. So, was it Proud Ground? Yeah. I think it is. Uh, might be getting ready to do something. Uh, they, It's not fenced off as yet, but uh, that, that wouldn't take but a few hours. So, uh, but they're staging for something. Cool. All right. Anything else then? All right, everybody. Well, I hope you all have a great evening and we'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Take care. Bye guys.